Okay, we're logged in as an agent and uh, when you log in you're taken straight to the dashboard. Uh, here you see a snapshot of your recent activity. Uh, so we're going to look at how to best utilise the information that you'll see in your dash. Uh, first and foremost, you'll see a contact activity time frame. Uh, you have the options of the last 7, 14 or 30 days or all time. Uh, the default is 14 days. It gives you a, a good indication of recent activity. And then we have the three sections of intent, requests and high value. Um, as uh, you've probably already heard from us, um, you, you know, you have uh, huge databases in your account. You can't personally be in contact with each and every uh, person in, in your database. What this information will help you to do is concentrate your follow-up efforts on people that have shown that they're interested, they're clicking on emails, uh, they're clicking on properties within your emails, they're uh, completing your um, surveys in your welcome email and your data discovery emails and they're requesting appraisals. So you can concentrate your efforts on people that are engaged and have better conversations and um, better outcomes. So here you can see the first section here we have is intent. So this feeds from people that complete the survey in either the data discovery campaign or the welcome email. So as you can see, everything's split up so that it's really easy for you to read. Um, and um, if people indicate that they are an upsizer or downsizer, you can see them here. Um, obviously people to have on your radar in terms of buying a property, but there may also be a listing opportunity there as well. So uh, definitely people to have on your radar there. Uh, investors, people that um, might um, be put onto your PM team. First home buyers might be looking for some finance. Um, and we've got two other sections here, loan lead and potential seller. Um, we don't automatically set up a loan campaign in your enterprise account, but if you have a relationship with a lender, you can uh, set up a campaign to garner um, loan leads as well for people that want to um, have a mortgage check, etc. So both of these indicators are the same. Um, with the potential seller, it means that a contact has clicked on the appraisal call to action but hasn't completed it. And the same with the loan lead, they've clicked on the loan call to action but haven't completed it. So it's an early heads up that somebody might be looking at getting an appraisal or uh, a loan checkup, um, but they haven't gone ahead and, and filled out the information and, and f completed the form. So if you're in contact with that person, it might be enough to um, push them over the edge or you know get the ball rolling on, on um, um, starting that relationship with you in terms of that request. Um, each of these cards you can click into for further information. So if we look at Upsizer, you'll see that all the information on the contact that has completed that information. So you can see here this contact Sophie has suggested she's upsizing. She's looking for a house with four beds between 2 and 2.7. So really, really valuable information there for you to go on so that when you're um, catching up with Sophie, you know what she's looking for. Coming back to the dash, uh, we've gone through the intent, so definitely uh, people to follow up with there in terms of their, um, what they've indicated they're looking for. Um, then over in requests, I'll just go back to 30 days. You can see here we've got appraisal requests and loan requests. Again, the loan requests um, aren't uh, automatically set up for you, but we can set them up for you if you have a relationship with a lender. Appraisal requests are people that have actively filled out the appraisal uh, call to action in either the appraisal life cycle or the sold property report and have requested your contact. So if we click on here, you can see um, the, the contact details and the address that they've requested the appraisal for. So you can see here John Mack, uh, he's given his uh, email address and the address he's looking for. Also so that you know, with any of these lists, you can click into the contact themselves. So if we click on John Mack, you can see a full contact card here. So a full snapshot of all the activity and information we have for this particular contact, um, including, including email, contact details, address if we have that, buyer preferences if they've filled out that survey, uh, any tags they have. Um, over here we've got all of their comms and open rates, etc. And even down to the, um, their most popular property in terms of clicks. So all of the information for this contact on one page. I'll come back to that in a bit more detail shortly. But as we move uh, past appraiser requests, obviously people that have requested contact, so people to, to come back to um, 
in response to their request. Uh, you'll also receive an email to your inbox as well when those appraisal requests come through, as well as, the, as they um, are sitting on your dashboard like this. Uh, and then we've got high value. So again, when we say you've got a database of, you know, could be in the thousands and you can't physically be in contact with each and every one, the high value lets you know who within your database is clicking on properties. They're showing that they're um, in the real estate market and they're looking around um, and helps you concentrate your follow-up efforts on those people. So highly interactive are people that are clicking on links and properties at a higher rate um, in the time period you've selected. Then up and coming is a really handy heads up uh, for, for two reasons. It can either be a newly subscribed contact who's just started to engage. If they keep engaging at that level, they'll end up in highly interactive. Um, the other helpful part of up and coming is it could be a contact that's been on your database for years. Say for instance, it's a, a, someone you've sold a house to five years ago perhaps, and they've had a change of circumstance. They're looking to downsize, upsize, if they start clicking on properties in your emails, uh, they'll appear in up and coming. So again, it's a heads up that they're recently re-engaged so that you can make contact with them before perhaps they make contact with, with another agency or another agent so that you can build the relationship. Uh, so foot in the door um, ahead of your competitors. So definitely keep those people on your radar as well. Again, you can click on any of these um, sub-levels to have a look at exactly who's within that um, section. If we look at highly interactive, you can see here uh, we have a list of those people. Um, and if we have a look at one, any in particular, let's have a look. You can see a full contact card again all of the information they've supplied uh, in terms of contact details, comms, open rate, etc., and down to, like I said, their most popular property in terms of clicks. If we have a look at the timeline, you can see exactly what the contact's been sent and what they've clicked on in recent times. You can see uh, a full list of property interaction on the next page. Uh, this can be helpful if they haven't completed the survey in the, the intention survey. So if you can see a pattern forming in their interaction, so for instance, if they're just looking at three bedrooms or they're looking at a particular price range, you can again get an idea of what the contact's looking for so that when you follow up with them, um, you've got a, a, that information behind you. And then if you've got the contact's address, if you go over to the map, you'll be able to see the contact pinpointed in relation to their engagement. So if you can see here, this contact's looking perhaps to relocate from Melbourne up to here. Um, the hourglass indicates a cluster of activities. So you can just zoom in to see more detail. Or you can uh, click on it to, to zoom in as well. The number indicates how many times they've clicked on that property and you can click on it to see more details on that particular property as well. So that's how you can delve further into the contact details. Um, and they are the three uh, reporting cards to definitely have on your radar. In a separate video, I'll go over the property notifications because they can also be very, very helpful.